had to take a little break. I had to take a little break, and it's, I'm glad that I can actually take a break because if this was an actual album I haven't listened to, I would have had to do the whole thing, and I probably would have died, right? Um, you know, those first six tracks, again, you know, from Skyfall to Mama Sita to Quintana Part 2, you know, they just get me, they give me so much energy, and they give me these kind of dark thoughts where it puts me in a place where I just, you know, I, I, again, I tell you guys, I'm a bit of a psycho, man, you know, you any YouTuber you meet is a bit of a psycho, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like for me, man, when I'm listening to music by myself, I'm talking to myself, I'm enjoying the music, I'm asking questions to myself. I'm just like, you know, thoroughly enjoying the experience of music. I love music. So um, the fact that I already heard all these tracks and I can have a connection to each track and kind of give you my story, and this is really a flashback, I can kind of cut it up into pieces and, you know, give you still give you that authentic experience because, you know, all the tracks are going to hit me you know, if I listen to it 101 times or 102 times, there's really no difference because it's going to be the same effect. Now, we're going to continue on with the project, which is uh, from track 7 in Zombies. Now, Zombies is the first track I didn't initially like when I first heard this project. When I heard Days Before Rodeo, I did not like Zombies. I thought Zombies was kind of just that... It, it was just out of the mix of what we heard from the first, you know, six. And and then it kind of the same thing what happened with Piss on Your Grave when I do that rodeo. I do got I do I do owe you guys a rodeo review now. You guys got that video three thousand likes, but it just reminded me of Piss in My Grave, Piss on My Grave. You know, I didn't like that track initially either, even with Kanye being on there. And Zombies definitely has grown on me. Like let's do a little bit. You see, like it kind of it has that build up. And then when he even once it gets into the track, you know, proud if they pay his pennies. How many need my dollars now? Stack it to it. He said, How are we gonna get the Oscar proud if he paying pennies? Cause you know, penny proud. So, as time gone on, time has gone on, I definitely learned how to appreciate the track. But come floating. La di da di da di all the kids out at the party. So I don't want to do too much of the playing of that track because, again, why I said that I initially didn't like it, I've, it definitely has grown on me, but it's still one of those tracks that I'm kind of just skipping. Now, I did tell you guys on my stream there was one track on here that I did not like off of Days Before 4 Rodeo. It always gets skipped for me. And now that I kind of gave it away that I like zombies, and if you're looking at the rest of the track list, come on now, you guys exactly know what track I'm going to dislike. But, um, zombies, man, again, it's just that I feel like Travis Scott is always going to bring that side of him. Kind of reminds me of what he did on that, uh, Wasted, he did it on that track, and on the track, um, you know, Pissing My Grave that he did it following up Rodeo. So, I kind of think that, you know, he has that aesthetic to him. I personally don't like when he does shit like that. Definitely love the more muddy Travis Scott. Are you kind of just the more trappy Travis Scott? But it's fine though, you know. Sloppy Toppy is the next track though. Now, this is when Migos was on the top. Sloppy Toppy is when Migos was on the top. This is the, this is, and, and Pee Wee Longway. No disrespect to me, Pee Wee Longway though. But this is when, you know what I'm saying, Migos was making, you know, uh, nigga don't look like me. What, 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 what track was that? Yeah. Boom. Because, y'all, for me, I didn't like Migos at first, right? I did not like Migos at first. I thought that Migos were kind of overrated. I thought that the sound was just like, uh. And then I kind of listened to it more and more. And I'm just like, you know what? You play that shit in the bar. You play that shit in the club. Which, at the time, I was going to the club heavy. And I was like, this shit is fire. I understand why people like the Migos. And now you can see what the Migos are now. Rain drop. Drop top. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so people always know who the Migos is. And, yeah, sloppy toppy, man. I feel like right here, this, this is Travis. Travis, even though Quavo ate this shit. Travis. And then that beat. Come on, beat. She see me pull up in the road. I'm thinking about chopping the top. Quavo ate this shit, yo. Hey, whatever y'all want about Quavo, yes, his solo album was straight dumpster juice. Gooch sweat. It was. It was so trash. But you cannot lie. This man Quavo on some hooks. He be eating that shit, bro. The distortion through his voice, how he sounds so funny on this shit. And he talking about sloppy toppy, you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing too, like sloppy toppy, bro. Like when you obviously, if you you young, you don't know what sloppy toppy is. But when you understand the concept of some sloppy top, all right, 
And I've done had the sloppiest of tops done to my ass. All right, you know what I'm saying? A1 Perico type shit. And I'm telling you right now. Sometimes shit. Sometimes I take I take head over sex sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real with y'all. Whoever was producing this shit. So before, you know what I'm saying? Before there was Oma, before there was Huncho Jack, you know what I'm saying? Which is very disgustingly underrated, man. I know a lot of people like to hate on Huncho Jack, man. Huncho Jack is definitely one of my tapes that it may not be my favorite, but for some reason, I got a lot of tracks on that bitch from all my playlists that I go back to my Moon Rock, you know what I'm saying? Feel how you feel. Feel up your cup. <laughs> That nigga Travis ate that shit. But I'm telling you, man, this sloppy toppy track is vintage Migos. The whoever was producing your hair, like it was like coming in with the old school beat, the meow, 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 and then the trap still hitting and shit. Yo, this track right here, a lot of people like underrate this track and say sloppy toppy is whatever, man. Like, no, fuck that. This shit is fire. She got the sloppy toppy bitches with my rocket list. She after my money, my number. No Twitter bitches wanna follow me. I'm living, making that disappear. I'm a magician. I had to let that ride because shout out to Pacquiao, you know what I'm saying? Even though Pacquiao lost against Floyd, you guys already know, man. Team Pacquiao, Philippine stand up, baby. While those, so the last two tracks aren't really the hype track. We gonna get to the hype tracks, though. But the last two tracks weren't really the hype tracks for me, right? They were definitely, like, just kind of the more... Well, Sloppy Toppy was more in your car, you know, you just, you, you snapping, you vibing that shit. They, they actually snapping on the beat, but I love how it was, you know, beautifully produced, man, having kind of that old school sample. I feel like, you know, between Rodeo and Days Before Rodeo at the time, Travis Scott was very, very influenced by, you know, old, you know, old funk, or not old funk, but old, like, R&B, soulful R&B, you know, he definitely puts that in a lot of his shit, like, you could hear it all throughout Rodeo, but I feel like, you know, there's hints in here, there. And then I think that having Migos on there as well was the start of a great relationship between him and Quavo, you know, as you can see right now. That's what I want to know, too. I want to know, is Travis Scott just cool with Quavo? Or, because, you know, I just noticed, like, he never did another track with the Migos. Well, pick up the phone. I don't really count that. I just count that as Quavo, right? And I feel like when he did, you know, as, as he went on, he just kept collaborating with Quavo, but not really offset or take off. So that's an interesting take right there, man. No pun intended. But get in the comments below. Let me know what you think about that. Because I feel like there might be something there that I just noticed. But uh, I know, and no, I meant no disrespect to Pee Wee Longway, even though I did skip his verse. Because, you know, it's, his verse is really whatever to me. But uh, no disrespect to Pee Wee Longway. You know, also doing his thing on there. I know everybody fucks, well, not everybody, but a lot of people fuck with Pee Wee Longway. But now, this is where we get into my, these two of my top fives right here next. Basement Freestyle. And backyard, y'all already know. Backyard, basement, free. First of all, hold on. Uh, 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 uh. Got my nigga easy in this motherfucker. And then I ain't trying to say it. Dead stock sixes and shit. <laughs> when I first heard that, I was like, he was like, dead stock sixes and shit. <laughs> I was like, what is this nigga talking about, bro? And then I, he was actually talking about Jordan 6s, which I assumed, but I didn't like, come on. I was like, come on, really? Is he really talking about, you know, Jordan 6s? Like, wh why does he randomly say dead stock 6s and shit? And I just remembered at the time, you know, Kanye was wearing infrared 6s, you know, making it popular. And then, you know, now Travis with a 6, he loves his 6. He lo he really loves his 6 because he just came out with, um, with a 6 this year. And I feel like, you know... It was basically kind of just when you actually look at from like from the future's past, man. It's crazy because this man really loved his shoes. He really loved production. The shit that he loved came into fruition. Like this man really has his own Nike. Like he has his own Jordan deal. So it's kind of just like damn. Like this man really dead stock sixes and shit. It's like that's what he's talking about. Slow it down. Pick it up. Felt the third speed the fourth gear. Grinded and she froze up. No, I'm froze up. Now come a little closer. Get your ass up off that wall. And go and roll that doja. Tell your boyfriend, bust that key. Go ahead and fill your nose up. And then you straight up. Like when the when the beat came in at the beginning. I 
did not think that that it was going to transition to that. Like, I didn't think he was going to get that out of his bag. Like, that shit was crazy. Like, he said, pick it up. Fin the third, speed the fourth career. Grinding every day, man. It's my year. Like, I was like, yo, Travis Scott is sliding on this shit, bro. Sliding. My main bitch. I'm on the third coast eating Merlot with I'm, Merlot. Merlot with Merlot. So y'all know me, man. I, when I call my wines, it's a uh, Pinot Grigio. Um, you know, say Merlot, and then uh, uh Cabernet Sauvignon. That's how I say it, Cabernet Sauvignon. And I feel like I never knew that you had crazy name. Like I never knew Merlot was Merlot. So when I found out me drinking wine three years ago and he was talking about Merlot, I was like, damn, that's what he's talking about. Okay. So, uh, you know, when you actually start hearing shit, and because when you don't understand the context, man, you can't really understand or feel a song. I think I'm not the only one that can speak for that, right? So I think that right here, you know, just this, when you come back to a project and you start understanding and hearing more shit, it's like, oh, that's what, oh, oh, I see. Tarzan, oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's talking about. That's my baby. Straight up. It's been doing coke since the 80s. Got dope. I'm a 90s baby. Man, like that track right there, again, like I wanted to get up, but I mean, I needed to call my ass down because I feel my voice already lose. I'm screaming and shit. But I, I think that Travis Scott, we knew. Like, I know, again, Al Farrell, I'm not mad. I'm, 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 not, I'm not mad, but I'm, not, I'm just saying, I'm not trying to disrespect. Yes, we already knew Al Farrell was there, all right? But this, days before rodeo, this is when the world knew, well, at least, like, the stands knew, our big fans, I would say, too. We knew that this man, Travis Scott, he was going to be special. We knew. We knew this. At this point, we knew. Now, the next track is just the, I feel like the next track is kind of just that, it was, it's the fun track of the album. Like, it's the, you know what I'm Like, you, you kind of just, got, you get the vibe. It's like the hot. It's like the hot on Young Thug album, you know what I'm saying? Everything lady, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like this is what this track right here, Backyard, is. And we all know that when Logic used it on his album, because he probably bought it out, this is a mixtape, so Logic definitely bought the beat. I feel like it gave me that reminiscent of, damn, that's why I like That's why I like that track so much, uh, Stainless. Oh, uh, no, not Stainless, Stain. <laughs> Did I say Stainless? What track was it? It is Stainless. I think it is stainless. Damn, did I get it wrong? Yeah, stainless, stainless. So. Anyways, <laughs> but yeah, backyard. And this nigga was eating chips at the beginning track. Yeah. 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 Let me tell the tell, cause you told the tell when you said I could make it this high. Who knew? God damn it, who knew? We didn't know. The grass ain't we knew, but we didn't know. Every time I feel so cold, my daddy ain't coming home till fall. That's why my pimp gave so moist. Had that do rag it on. Had a 20. I knew like he was versatile enough to keep like, okay, yeah, while he was still having that dark shit and we was feeling like we was about to go murder somebody, you know what I'm saying? This right here showed us that he had another side to him where he could actually make some some radio friendly music. And I can't, I feel like right here in backyard is what gave me hope of damn this man's gonna be a, he's gonna be a star, bro. Like he really is. No that room, that was last junior, yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, for real. For real. Bad y'all we chillin'. Bad y'all we drinkin', smokin', homie, bought out the liquor. Did you find your purpose? Yeah. Now my show's back down like churches. Fans never missing out a word on the verses. Never sit around, just work. Nah, nigga, not churches. Stadiums, nigga. Not churches, bruh. Go alert me. No hustle, I don't cop, I don't fuck this journey. Yeah, I feel that, bro. You heard me. Talking about what you niggas here. Everybody talking about is that real? Yeah. For real. Hey, what we doing? What we doing? Back y'all, we chillin'. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah. 
fuck I was trying to do right now. I, I felt like I was going to freestyle. You know, y'all know I, be, I don't be rapping and shit. But I felt like I was going to freestyle. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck that. Let me not do that shit. But yeah, man. That shit's crazy, bro. That Backyard Man is definitely the most fun track on this album. Um, I just think that, you know, it just gives a different vibe from what we got. But in a good way. And I think that... Travis Scott, man, it just showcased how he could just be so versatile moving forward in his career. Just a kind of just a predecessor to what we were already going to get. Now, track 11 is great. All right, and as most of you guys guessed, Gray is the track that I did not like. Um, I still, to this day, just feels like, um, you know, I'm in a kid's store and I'm about to build some locks. Or I'm about to, you know, build a teddy bear at Build-A-Bear. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what kind of that track reminds me of. It just... Great to me, man. We can listen to it for a We wake up when the sun goes down. Neighbor says the smells too loud. Fuck that kind of shit, that scholarship, that's hypnotized. Yeah. Ooh. We wake so I know a lot of you guys that are great fans are probably going to be disappointed when we're like, Dev, 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 come on, man. Great so far. Why you ain't listen to it, Dev, Dev? Dev. Come on, man. Like, I just, for me, man, Gray, I just felt so out of place. I wouldn't say it was dumpster. I'm just saying it was a track that wasn't for me. There we go. I'm not saying it's bad. It's not a bad track. It's just whatever to me, man. You know, I kind of just skip it. I'm like, uh, we just got the backyard and basement freestyle. You follow up with Gray, and then you got back right after that. Like, how, what, like, what am I supposed to do? Enjoy Gray? Like, Gray is just a track. It's just exactly that. It's Gray. It's grayed out. You know what I'm saying? I don't see that shit. John Cena type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't... I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just a track that... It, it, he definitely could have left that one off and just had it at a, as a bonus and just made back the last track. And I would have been... I think if you would have made back, this arguably... Well, this arguably is one of the best mixtapes ever, but this would have literally been cemented as probably, you know... You know, everybody always likes to argue Rodeo, Astro World. Days Before Rodeo, Rodeo, Days Before Rodeo, Astro World, Astro World, Rodeo, Days Before Rodeo, Astro World, Days Before Rodeo, Rodeo. So I feel like, you know, I, if this, it didn't have gray on it for me, I think that I probably would have had this as his best project. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because y'all know me, uh, Astro World, it's like Astro World, Rodeo, like this. I already made the video. You guys want to watch that video? You can watch it. But it's Astro World, Rodeo, like this. Um, with, you know, sometimes it, all, it could be alternated. It's, it's really equal, man. You know, it's really equal sign at the end of the day. It's more about preference, but I think they're equally just as great as the other. But I feel like Days Before Rodeo is like right here. And it's a sliver away from being, you know, just as great as both of them. Well, not, it is great, but just as good as both of those. So, uh, last track though is Bonus. Um, back Bonus. Produced by Metro. Now, this track. I did not, like, you said you want hype, you want bass? Say no more. Metro boy wants some more, nigga. Back in the mix. Back on that dirt. Straight up. Oh, no, 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 sir. Straight up. Back in the mix. And when I heard this on the speaker system for the first time, my God, I'm gonna deny you, boy. It smell like Swiss. Oh, no, 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 sir. If that bitch smell like Smith. What did that fish smell like Swiss? Then we back at no service. So if he's saying that pussy smell like cheese, <laughs> he could have just said if it, the cheese smell like, I would have believed that too, but. Back house, nigga. 2020 Lambo, new edition, got to hit two gigs to back out, nigga. You With know, a got this shit like we in the motherfucker. I don't know if y'all ever heard that Sonic stage, Sonic and Sonic Knuckles. Remember that sand stage? I don't know, that might be a little too young for y'all, but remember that mummy stage? It definitely sounds like we got some type of Sphinx shit going on, some Egyptian kind of vibe going on here with this beat. Metro always was doing his thing as well on the beat, so it's kind of just like, damn, this shit. I was like, whoa, whoa. I want to hit one of these. Down, down, right, down, right. I hit anything I said. I did it damn right. Only roll that gas, no bad ass. Bitch, you treat a pint like a handle. When I so I never knew what the bando was. Trapping out the bando. I never knew what it was before. I'm just saying, like I was always confused what a bando was. I had to be informed. This bitch and I can stop. Straight up, back in mix. Back on that dirty. Back in mix. Back on that dirty. Oh, oh, no. so back on the block. He back serving dirty. That was that was Metro Man. But let it rock one time. The moment was the moment, nigga. Back in mix. Back on that dirty. Straight up. Back on the block. 
Like, come on, man. Like, that track, if you telling me that between Back and Gray, and you telling me that Gray should have been on a mixtape rather than Back, like, no, you need to back up and take a second and look. That Gray is not, is inferior to Back. Gray is inferior to Back, bro. Like, I just think that with the energy that we got from Basement Freestyle, Backyard, Back, that would have been the perfect ending to this mixtape. But having Gray on here, man, it just felt out of place. Again, it wasn't a bad track. It just wasn't for me. So for you guys that are really upset about that, don't be upset. I would like to hear if that, okay, if you guys love Gray, right? If you guys love Gray and Gray is your favorite track or one of your favorite tracks, let me know if you had to pick 11 tracks, right? If one track had to be deleted off this mixtape, which one would you delete? It's a tough question, right? Which one would you delete? Give you guys about 10 seconds, you know. Exactly, you wouldn't delete anything except great because there ain't no other answer. But I'm again, look, I'm just glad that I, I look, I'm glad I needed that break. All right, I know you guys don't, you hate when I do part twos because you just want to hold things straight to start, start to finish. But you gotta understand, man, I was dying. I was losing my voice, my heart was beating fast, bro. You know, I, I was hyped. And I was literally about to get hyped again. I just, you know, I, I, sit your ass down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you gotta tap yourself on, sit your ass down. Sometimes you gotta talk to yourself and talk yourself out of that. But I feel like, right here, man, Travis Scott, Days Before Rodeo. Um, What an experience it was listening to the first time. I always tell you guys, man, music is about how you connect with it. It's about how you, which memories you apply to it. That's how an album is really gonna hit you. Like, I laughed at it, like, you know, um, Somebody asked me the other day, like, what's your best Kendrick album? Uh, and I was like, Good Kid, Mad City. They're like, but to Pimp a Butterfly? And I said, Good Kid, Mad City. But to Pimp a Butterfly, though. This had one of the most acclaimed albums ever. And blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, Good Kid, Mad City. <laughs> like, what, what do you want me to say? Yes. At the end of the day, it, yes. To Pimp a Butterfly may be his overall best album to the masses. But to me, and how I felt, and... The memories that I have with, you know, Good Kid, Mad City and my preference and my opinion and what I like, Good Kid, Mad City is his best, his better album. You know what I'm saying? It's his best album in my opinion. Now, um, same thing goes with any music you listen to, man. A lot of people don't like Usher, Conf well, a lot of people don't like Usher Confessions. A lot of people, uh, you want to know about uh, Echoes of Silence, like The Weeknd, Echoes of Silence. When I get, whenever I get there, that project to me is kind of just, it's like whatever to me and compared to Thursday and House of Balloons, it's kind of just like, yeah, it's just there. So I feel like, man, you know, music is what you can connect to, is what you put your, uh, apply your memories to. And again, you guys saw the story. You guys saw each track made me feel. You guys saw what, what I, you know, what I could tell you guys exactly where I was and how I was feeling and how I'm still feeling to this day on certain music because, you know, the great memory that I have, a double-edged sword it is, you know, a good thing and a bad. I just remember every, you know, detail of like the track and what I liked and how I felt in special moments and it always connects to me. So Travis Scott, man, I am going to do rodeo guys. So you guys did get that 3000 likes on that part one. So appreciate you guys. First of all, I handed me a round of applause for that shit, but, um, I will do rodeo. I definitely will do rodeo, man. I think rodeo is going to be a fun time. I will do rodeo. We're going to do, we're not going to do the deluxe though. I hate when people say the deluxe. I only did great bonus because it's 12 tracks. But I hate when say everybody say Rodeo Deluxe. Yes, we're not gonna do that schoolboy cue. That didn't count. We ended at Apple Pie. All right, that's where we end at Apple Pie. So don't get mad at me when like, damn, hey, damn, why you ain't do the Rodeo fool? You missed three tracks because it was originally 15 tracks or 16 tracks or 14 tracks, whichever one was. You know what I mean? Anyways, uh, get in comments below, man. Let me know your favorite track from Days Before Rodeo. Let me know what's your worst track from Days Before Rodeo. Uh, get your video 3,000 likes, like always. Get new vinyl on the wall. We are filling the wall up. I have to actually do that. I have to fill my wall up because I owe you guys a lot, actually. So uh, I was looking back at it and I owe you guys a lot. Um, if you want to watch the, watch the full video, man, it'll be on Patreon. You want my playlist, is on Patreon. You want to join the Discord, it's on Patreon. All that is on Patreon, man. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on social media, which you want to hear. And um, yeah, man, thank y'all for watching, man. Flashback number two is done. Let's keep it going for 2020, man. We are growing 2,000, 200, 2,000K, 200K. By the end of August, man, I think that's where I'm primed for 200k by the end of August. So yeah, we are 200k, man. That's a, a fifth of a of a million. We, we're there. We're getting there. I'm still talking, man. We gotta go. Peace.